Okay. Um, hi everybody. It's about nine five past. So I think get started. Is anybody? Uh, there was Marcus indispensable machine. What do you know? About <laughs> can we look? Specific? Can you throw it up? Or what is the screen? Oh, do you want to go to the black, the um, blueprint whiteboard? Paper. Blueprint. There you go. So you we have me. David, me, Gary, James, and MPT. Go. Excellent. So um, this is basically to talk about the great plans we have for the server side of the software center for the next six months to kind of prioritize what we have on the list to uh, Get see if there are other ads. Things. Yes, if you have other stuff to add, um, discuss it also. So and, and encourage people to contribute. Exactly. Things that they'd like to see. That would be great. Sorry, David, I can't use it. Oh, I'm sorry. It's fine. So, and, like, to encourage other people to contribute if they want to do something in the software center. Yeah. Server. So basically, for the software center server, um, we currently have three code branches. Uh, one is software centers agent and developer portal, that's my apps. That one's currently uh, not open source. Where we're working out mm -hmm. and looking. It's, it's what does the whole my apps portal. Then we have <coughs> appsubuntu.com is uh, hosted in, on, in the Ubuntu web catalog uh, launch pack project. That's open source and We've received a couple of contributions already, and then there's ratings and reviews, which is um, also open source. Um, <coughs> yeah. So, do you want us to go down the list, or do you have things you wanted to um, add to the list? Um, just, just out of curiosity, is this priority order currently? Roughly, I mean, okay. we've discussed before, well, the ARB integration, the, the first five or six things on the list are kind of high priority than the rest of the things on the list, but not a strict ordering there. Okay. So, <coughs> ARB integration is, is an item that comes out of a session yesterday from ARB. Um, we discussed making the, the whole communication, the whole process public. And that is currently public, so okay. I think we need to discuss that a bit more with the RB members once we decide what exactly needs to be public and how. But that would need a bit of work. When is this session today about the relationship of RIB backwards and all this other? It's tomorrow, tomorrow, mm -hmm. Friday at 10 a.m. All right, I see. Yeah. Also, we, <coughs> we've just granted the RB members access to the uh, review process in my app. So we should go over that at some point with you guys. I think, I think Ant, um, Anthony and I are going to sit in the hour after this session and walk through the way it works now um, and see when I can get all the ARP members on the, on the new system. What's the sort of general level of excitement or enthusiasm or energy in the ARP at the moment? Up, down, sideways? <laughs> um, they're brand new, so we've got some great new enthusiasm, enthusiasm but uh, we're working on direction. Right. Like channeling that enthusiasm into forward momentum. Okay, because I mean, I think it's good. I think it's likely that the volume picks up, and it will need quite people yes. sort of like some combination of energy, but also rigor and process. We're a special kind of crowd that you need to build. We're going to need channels for uh, volunteers who are not voting board members to participate as well. That's right. one of the things we started talking about yesterday. And we'll talk more about on Friday. Um, so I had a question which is a little orthogonal to what you're doing, and I apologize for for jumping in. The ratings and review capability yes. of what's been built on the back end, how general is that? It's pretty general. I mean, um, we were talking, I think Gustavo asked about this for other things and with um, the different options. Um, I think if you start submitting reviews, talking to the API, you can start submitting reviews for other things. The, the server is really... So just about names, essentially. We read about from different origins, like from Debian or for, for different things. There are some validations that check if we read your project, if those will also check that, that project exists. But it's, it's really, really general. Okay, so... Things other than applications, 
Uh, yeah, and particularly Juju Charms, essentially, because we've got quite a lot of excitement around that, and I think we want to create some sort of feedback loop for for the developers of Charms, so that they can get direct feedback. How that would get expressed, whether that's projects in Launchpad or so the Charm namespace, I don't know. Would the Charms themselves be added to software? So because if that's the case, then they can just be treated as a standard package and... There is a right. use case... There is a use case for developers to be able to say from Software Center, hey, deploy me a Rails stack on my workstation. And it just deploys as a series of containers. Um, so it doesn't pollute the file system. It doesn't bring the packages into this file system, but it puts them into a set of containers. It's a very sweet developer experience. But I don't know that, I don't know that, uh, I don't know that GUI integration of that in 12.04 is, is, is viable. It would be more interesting to figure out Command line integration of that for 12.04. Mm -hmm. And if it works, if it gets popular, then. We've already had a request for uh, a service category. And I, I, yeah. I was thinking you'd the same thing. Well, yeah, that seems a bit late, but if it was yeah. combined with one of for example, to install this on my server rather right, than mm -hmm. install this on the session, That's true. Well, I don't. It's a little tricky if you start getting into multi-machine management because you know then when you say my server, what if you've got five of them? So um, I think it might be tighter to sort of think about saying a software center is always managing what's on my machine, but there really is a use case for my machine spinning up a a, 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 a stack essentially of related services. Um, <coughs> That stack can then be thrown in the cloud as a separate, you know, as a separate, as a separate use case. Um, there are a couple of API calls that uh, wouldn't need as entities as some kind of hash to so not bring, say, all the statistics for all reuse if you're only interested in software stacks, uh, to just bring the, the bandwidth to the API right. calls down. So is your thought that if you, we would have one essentially ratings or review server that gets shared across multiple? Mm. Or they could quite, for quite a long while, there's a server and it. Okay, we so see a huge amount of, I don't know, Juju channel reviews, and we see we need to split the data out. But, but, but it's essentially multi-tenanting already in its design. You can say this is a rating for this name in that namespace kind of thing. Yeah, we have a concept yeah. of origins. Right. I guess it could just be a, a new origin. But now we're using origins for yeah. economical yeah. Ubuntu, PPA, and, right. some and they all get aggregated. Canonical yeah. being? Red That's canonical? Part, no. oh, right. It's awesome. Like <laughs> they could put up another instance of the ratings review server themselves, though, too. Oh, much nicer if you can get someone else to do the, the right <laughs> 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 administration. I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, could could this not be uh, another kind of web page service like my app? Well, they want to uh, they want to copy that too. App they, they could run. Run, like app start and run to you. Could you not have a, a web page of charms and write the charms? Right. I don't know if you're interested in, in something like that. Or if oh, I think yeah. So yeah. I, I, I wasn't so clear. That, I, that I think I think there will be publicly available and be visible. Yeah. No. So we'll definitely do something like that. How does the how do you mm -hmm. deliver? Ratings and review content to to apps that are to you know to that to so the web. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a, it's just a web API service essentially. So it's just what like a RESTful. Mm -hmm. And the software center and my apps both connect to that. And, the, and my apps and software center. I think we're done. Yeah. I think it's perfect. Do you have a new. Don't run it for them. They can run their own. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. just one database. One. Yeah. Things. And what all the all the authentication is just single sign on. Uh, yes. Authentication for submitting reviews for marketing them as useful for flagging them. There's one moderation interface at the moment that I guess if we have a Juju Charm Origin. review moderators. Uh, we might need to split that up at some point. At the moment, they just go in and see all the flagged reviews and moderate them. I mean, the moderation is the same sort of idea, right? It's, yeah. it's taste and language in turn. Yeah, exactly. Right. I think we don't have a web API for that at the moment, it's just with a website. Oh, that's brilliant. You guys are way the way. Thank you. Advise people to use your stuff. Thank you very much for Barry and MVO have written up initially. Oh, I get credit for stuff. Okay, that's <laughs> no, no, it's <laughs> twice in one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are way too nice. Anyway.
So I think there's some reviews in rating standardization. Right? <laughs> 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 we really need to make it work. Um, yeah. Don't worry, I'll break it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of curiosity, th these charms are going to get sold as well. Like, can you like will be will yeah. there be like free charms and purchase charms? Yeah. Okay, then we for purchase charms. Um, in the future, not in the short term. Yeah. Of course, there is. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> um, All right. Back so to so once ARB is nicely wrapped up, the plan was that we'd have some attention from the design team on apps that are going to come for a couple of weeks, in a couple of weeks. Um, so the plan was to add in search engine optimization, the redesign, and possibly uh, make it work in different languages. So on apps Ubuntu.com at the moment, you see reviews in all languages. And we could do, um, we could use a, a set language header and check for that and make it behave better. I might also add to languages, actually, kind of keep it in line with the regioning we're doing in software, region <coughs> pieces. We're not doing region at yeah. the moment in software something. Um, Mostly because it's, it's important to keep someone who see, what someone sees in software center on the desktop, the same as what they see on the web. Every time mm -hmm. those diverge, it's going to be hard for someone to figure out why. Right. So when you say regioning, you mean this app should only be available in these countries? If a developer chooses some things like that, yeah. Right. We have some work already in the, so in the software center to do. Some, some plans. Some plans, sorry. Right. Some plans to do that. And so, so making sure it matches. I think one it's really essential bit would be that the software center <coughs> client would mean need to fetch only apps for their country and right. wherever use it. Maybe we could even both share the same mechanism, I mean, mm -hmm. like using GOIP maybe. Right. I, I like on the identifying what region you're in on the client is kind of tricky. I was going to say that would be harder to do on the on a website. So you know, that would be harder to do on a website. Once you're logged in, it shouldn't be that hard. Yeah, the users should so have some pretty place yeah. where they're set yeah. in their account. And you would put the, re <coughs> the general regional settings where you can choose the language, and then you can choose the regional settings. But okay, so you can so explicitly set. And on language selector, you can choose things like that. Yeah. But it's just well, yeah. um, I mean, uh, okay. like uh, people from Spain might move to Germany. Yeah. So right. things that are available in Spain might not be in Germany. <coughs> yes, these are but they, they not too worried about those. Yeah. They might still have their Spanish settings. I mean, if that's good enough, yeah. if that's good enough that the user selects what region is in. Mean, if you're a Spanish user living in Germany, and if the your country or in Spain, you might want to see these with Spanish populations. Yeah. I, I'm, I don't want to, we're not going to solve that. Those really complicated edge cases that yeah. exist in like every piece of software people who live in Spain and then move to Germany have <laughs> about the fact that it's really difficult to then see things that are in the German, in the region of Germany or Europe and in Spanish. But we right. seem to have some ways to express some of the things that, to make right, sure. So we have two bits <coughs> of that would be on the server and one would be on the client. Mm -hmm. So we'd have my apps would need to be able to let the developer specify what countries yep. they want to sell their software in. Uh, software Center would then... We had mentioned this at some point when developing exhibits. We wanted to make exhibits country-specific to be... Right. You know, mm -hmm. to yeah. promos for... Does that still apply? Well, it still makes sense. We also yeah. want to make exhibits. Right. Why not? I mean... Um, yeah. You know, this might not be 12. Uh, so we're doing some of this in 1204. I'm like, make sure we stick that there. Yeah, but send, sending an additional header, uh, it's not a big deal on the client. And if the mm -hmm. server at some point catches up um, and, and uses it, it's fine. If not, it doesn't really matter. Like, it's not a lot of development right. work for us. Um, and as, as I said, like, as long as we are fine with uh, the, the, the user can set the region, like, if it, if it doesn't have to be, you know, secure in the sense that the user cannot fake it, then it's really straightforward to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be secure. Oh, yeah, that's fine. In this case, I'm not concerned. It's just get a degraded experience yeah. if they choose the incorrect one. Because right. it'll be right. things that they probably won't like. Right. We would assume, because the software center is so good at having every uh, region's most popular things. Right. Okay. Okay. 
Um, so, the next one on the list says recommendations. That's kind of a big task for this cycle. Uh, it will probably be a new service, and it will aggregate the data we have available to kind of generate recommendations for the user. That is, uh, ratings and reviews, popcorn, um, some other data sources. On can get yeah. anonymized, anonymized one count yeah. data. Yeah. Um, Purchases. Mm -hmm. Transactions. I think it will be closed source at first, opens, opened up along the way, or open source from the beginning. I mean, it makes sense to. Uh, encourage contributions yeah. from yeah. the okay. beginning. Contributions. Yes. Right. <laughs> to make it open source right from the start. Yeah. yeah, from the start, it seems. Okay, so it's going to be open source from the start. <laughs> um, That's the default, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Oh. Nothing on the RC screen. Oh. Yeah, it just looks like nothing's been on there since last time. Oh, it's a little longer than RC I am. You are. It doesn't uh, say something. So, specking out the recommendations engine would be another session altogether. Um, we, <laughs> we do have a spec from MPP for recommendations, so we'll be following that. Um, And that's pretty much, I mean, we will encourage contribu uh, contributions to, to that service. Is anybody specifically interested in recommendations or, or being part of the recommendations effort? Yeah. <laughs> Fascinating. I mean, I'll, I'll go for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the brand new one is going to be shiny and fellow <laughs> forwards. Trust metrics and recommendations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, metrics is, is further down the road, but we're going to focus on some metrics. It's like uh, <coughs> about the ARB, ARB session yesterday. We were asking about so how long do apps take to go through ARB, and it would be nice to make those those metrics public. And it would be great to have those metrics first. So we're a bit ashamed that we're not collecting that data yet, but we're going to start them. <coughs> so binary auto packaging ma integration is about um, the automatic binary packaging. Uh, the tools team is working. I think there's been a session on that already. Um, is there? The session on automatic packaging has happened already, or it's no. There is there session? Ah, okay. there is session. You pretty much right. There is no session. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, but I mean, this, that code is uh, public. Um, yeah, all the code is public. At the moment, so the package means the back end's not even um, that you're in the branch in your trunk folder that, that we're going to be using for that actual service. They have to register a project for that now. Oh, I won't do that, but cross the whole world down there. Perfect. OK. Um, this is already getting into, well, the logged in experience is still quite surely on the list for 1204. Uh, we want to add recommendation integration when we have a recommendations engine, be able to re submit reviews via the web, and possibly queue stuff for installing when you see an app, but you're not on an Ubuntu machine at the time. If you're logged in with your SSO account, you can mark something for installation, and the software center will install it next time you fire up your Ubuntu box. That would be great to have. Um, that's pretty easy with one conf. Um, yeah, so it's once you have so the idea is to right. have some profiles, maybe as well, so that you can create a I don't right. know a netbook profile, mm -hmm. and I have two netbooks, and my two netbooks are using the netbook profile. So you could install it across your machine. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But every time, yeah, I think it's a software center. We should ask. Oh, you have ten actions pending. You want to apply them or not? So right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it would, would have to ask. ask it wouldn't yeah. do it automatically. Right. Is one conf server? It's my app. Yeah, not, not my apps, uh, apps that we yeah. okay. But if we want to do that through one conf, we have to explore the model, I guess. Because uh, as I know, I just yes. push some kind of binary, yeah. Well, yeah. just a JSON file. Mm -hmm. If we want to use that data for recommendations, we would probably be handy for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. 
There's the process too of logging into OneConf or setting up a OneConf account. It says it's up. It says it's up. So, so what if a user has not set up OneConf on their on their desktop and they log into the website and they say they want to install an application? Does OneConf automatically then get enabled on their client? Well, uh, yeah. 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 it gets as associated to the account. I mean, you log in and you don't have any OneConf data, so you won't be able to review apps because you don't have anything installed, but you want to be able to queue applications next time you fire up the box. If you log in with the same account on that box, okay. you see the yeah. pending action. Okay. And currently, we don't upload that until you actually choose to share, you know, exactly. or choose that, yeah. or turn it on. But I guess it's a good point. We should actually encourage it. Like once we have this um, locked in experience, we should actually you know, encourage people, you know, in order to su submit reviews, mm -hmm. um, turn on your, turn on OneConf one one and make it maybe even more obvious in the client. You guys are going to require OneConf? No, no, just if you do, if you want to do it on apps.ubinter.com, <laughs> the server needs to know what application you, applications you actually have installed. I mean, otherwise, you know, I could install, uh, I could review some random KDE application. Right, 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 right. I, I see, and that's what I mean. The key here, the key here is you can only review applications you purchase or yeah, download or install. Exactly. Or install. Yeah. Sorry. On the desktop side, that's yes. enforced yes. by the client because you no, know, right. right. where we need to. Know. Got it. Um, so for offline install, we need to know all the machines mm -hmm. that you have. Yep. And uh, having some kind of, you know, you choose on which machine you want to do something. And right. And we need the icons. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the icons with the wallpaper. Yeah, the numbers, right. Ah, uh, so we need that on the website. See, you're screwed. We don't. We are thinking of using really? the one to ones to, to store the machine in the logos, but that's information the user is interested in here. Oh, we yeah. could have generic icons and machine names. We'd be okay. Yeah, no, the thing is, it's a high level availability service that has multiple app servers, so storing files across multiple app servers is. So right, that's what I'm saying. For, yeah. for the time being, we could have, generic, we could have pretty generic yeah. machine icons. And it's a feature <laughs> enhancement to make sure. Yes, yes. So, do we need, so a, right. do we need a librarian or something? We'd love a librarian for Software Center Server. Can you get us a library? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're looking at using S3 storage or some other right. thing instead, because setting up a library for us is kind of... And this is generated <coughs> from your wallpaper. I wonder if you can run so whichever part ID of OpenStack does the S3 separately to everything else, just as a... Could be. That would be an easy way, a nice way to do it. What was the way? Uh, running stack. the S3 component of OpenStack mm -hmm. standalone. Because then it, you can move to S3 itself if you want. Though the IP, API is incompatible, so you can't do that. Is that so the But you can move to <coughs> um, The idea that would be, so just for the notes, it's to use the S3 OpenStack. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a problem which has come up, which Anthony has mentioned a few times, yeah. to do with more of a lab service storing files. And was and a painful. Was it appstartubuntu.com that took it, no, weeks it's to roll out because of that? Or yeah, appstartubuntu.com is, is avoiding storing files completely to work around this problem. But my apps did it and took a long while to roll out because yeah. of it. Yeah. So it's just going to keep coming up. Um, okay. And so translated descriptions, is taglines, and keywords for apps is something we have uh, a standard way to do for packaged apps that come from universal main, and that's using um, get text and launchpad right. to crowdsource the translations. That could be tricky for commercial applications. Uh, ARB applications would probably have no problem. Yeah, so could be given the option. I would really like to see this moved up in the priority order okay. because okay. translations, especially when we talk RAB, are mm -hmm. pretty important in my book. Um, more important than, say, the locked in experience. It, to me personally, I mean, I'm right. Um, but is this something that's really software center so server? So server kind of like, is this in there? It needs to have a little bit support for it. It's not a lot. Um, it, uh, so I guess what it needs to do for RIB applications, it needs to take the description 
push it to a Launchpad translations branch, it will show up in Launchpad translations, and then all, all the people who are currently doing translations will see it, and then it needs to come back and regularly collect the translation data and um, recheck it. And yeah, exactly, ge generate a translations file for it. And this something you put in place already for, for your direct application, so it would be really doing the same, the yeah. same work that you've done, right? Right. I just, I just don't know where the My Apps needs to do this. Like the, wouldn't the packager or the author of the application who then just republish an update when there were more translations and we would just pick that up like a regular update? Oh, it's, it's about translating the package description, not the, the package application itself. Yes, Sorry. Yes, yes. Yeah. Tagline description and keywords. Um, yeah, I think that's mostly what on the server. Yeah, so it, uh, it would be. So, regarding the translation as well, uh, are, are you planning things like uh, the suggestion that we made? Before about adding a translate button for uh, reviews. Um, yeah. So if you know how you get the reviews, so right. you can get things in Chinese and Russian right. and things like that. Right. Um, in order to be able to moderate that, most of the moderators would possibly speak English. Right. So they can't really translate it without. Copy and pasting it into a translation tool, whereas if there was a button that said translate, that then becomes useful worldwide rather than just in the country that they've written it. Would the moderators not be able to speak the same language? I did. Yeah. I did. I did. <coughs> yes. yeah. There's no guarantee. No guarantee. The yeah, the but there's also no guarantee that English speaking person, there will be an English speaking community or or the reviewing, or on the sorry, the reviews. Uh, so the, the, there's, there's no fixed rule for it, but if, um, if there is, uh, uh, the, the idea in my head was if there's a button to click, in the same way as we've had a button to click for translation, so you can read anybody's messages. Um, it makes that review then more useful to the whole world. Because then you can say, um, uh, see a Russian one or a Chinese one, and instantly go on, even like um, the Spanish and Portuguese and things like that, and just instantly translate that into your language. And then you can see what other people around the world are thinking about that application. Yeah. As well as it aiding moderators, because if you've got English speaking moderators and they're only moderating the English ones, what happens to all the ones where there's only one trans, uh, trans uh, there's only one person from that? Yeah. Um, it's a great idea, we'll definitely put it out language. Translating yeah. reviews may be useful for uh, moderators, may be useful for application developers. I don't think it's going to be useful for users, uh, firstly because machine translation isn't going to do. Great job. Well, the thing right, right? the quality of the application depends uh, a lot on the quality of the translation of the application. Right. The sites that are doing it already using Google Translate, like the, what? the sites like TripAdvisor, I think, are doing it already mm -hmm. using Google Translate. You can generally get the gist of the review of what <coughs> the quality of a hotel does not depend on the quality of the translation of. Well, there isn't a translation of a hotel, but there is a Okay. It would definitely be useful in moderation because I'm constantly cutting and pasting because yeah. tons of, <laughs> of non-English uh, reviews mm -hmm. get flagged. So just to have that button there would be nice. How is um, the like how much stuff do we actually get currently in the moderation queue? Uh, I haven't looked I'm lately, but before we make a server feature, a that, we can make a grease monkey script fairly easily to do some of this too. Right? This is like I'm, no, I'm just trying to take things off your. <laughs> And the moderators can use that, yeah. which is just save, we're saving a cut and paste that some people do. Like we don't need to make a server feature for it. I hope. How big is it now? No, no, seventy currently. Waiting moderation. Lots of. There's usually lots of uh, non-English. Oh, okay. yeah, because the English more. ones get moderated quick. Right. There's just linger. So I guess I guess maybe we should try to 
grow the team again to see if we can find some more diversity when it comes to you know spoken languages. Who's moderating now? Um, there's a team for it. Well, I, I just sometimes yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't have a once a week I go and so. Is anyone else here? I think you're in moderator. So review moderation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Really easy, friendly interface. Yeah, please read friendly comments, I guess. I want to join, so yeah. The thing about doing it, I think what we, we need to do though is we need to really explicitly state what kinds of criteria we, we use to moderate them. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, a lot of yes. people flag things for reasons that, you know, you have to make the call, and I think we really want to make it clear that everybody's making the call for the same reasons. You know, because you're saying yes or no. If you say yes, the review goes back in and reappears. Right, right. But if you say no, the review is gone. And somebody wrote a review and they cared enough to write a review. So it's kind of a big responsibility to, to kill that review. So, yeah. so we have and to make sure the, we're doing it for the right reason. Yeah, does the reviewer who you just moderated get a list no, of the reasons? No, we've talked about that. So um, I think yeah, we can, we can make the list of the criteria we're using. And mm -hmm. We send that back to the... Uh, we send that back to the moderator. The person whose review is moderated, so they understand why, and they can either edit it or re re try again, which I'm sure they would. They'd get the moderator's reason, not the flagger's reason. Right, right. right. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the, flaggers, both, right. the flaggers, I think they don't try to flag the I wouldn't want to give the flaggers reason. Thinking that that reason, reason would go to the yeah. review. Yeah. And they'll, they'll review again, I'm sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and if they won't review again, then we don't have to worry about it so much. Or I'm not going to worry about it so much. And you make the message professional, like, thank yes. you for taking yes, the time to right. do a review. Right. Yep. Um, so, quite a few things on the list, and we're down to 20 minutes. Yes. I Can want to ask one, again, one does anybody want to, looking at this discussion, add something yes. or comment on other items? We just go try and go down with it. Okay. Coming up, system requirements. This has been on a couple of sessions already. It's the ability <coughs> for the developer to specify what uh, capabilities the user should have on his box to be able to install an app. So um, this be like a major poster. This doesn't work on Intel. Yeah, right. <laughs> that currently they're don't adding, show it Intel. Currently they are adding a, a note in the description for the app. Are they adding a note in the description? Yeah. yeah. Well. <laughs> they should be right now. They should be. Okay. So we have apps that don't work well on some kind of boxes or we have different form factors that will be able to run different applications. So the description should definitely A lot of times, it's him that finds that. Yeah, you, right. don't get to, you don't get to make the decision for the app developer. <laughs> if they want to change their description to add those things, they get to... Yeah, so they won't add that in there unless we right. recommend they add that in there. Mm -hmm. Or they get reviews and say, they want to make sure their reviews are, are positive and they should be... They, they, they do should understand be reviewing the reviews, their reviews for sure. <laughs> and some of them do, you know, yeah. we had that discussion. It right. got moderated out and then changed the whole thing, so there's only two reviews, but still. <laughs> <laughs> we can show, I mean, the idea isn't to show those capabilities, display them in the Software Center and on the website and on my apps so that a developer can express the things that the user needs and the user can kind of figure out if this application is going to, is expected to run really well or, it's exp they're, or they're taking their computer in their own hands. Right. <laughs> installing something that might not be recommended. So this one has a, quite a bit of work on top of it in the list, um, but as I think I, I didn't mention at the beginning, as 1204 is an LTS, we're going to try to stub out most of the things that uh, mm -hmm. affect the client early in the cycle to be able to let the client uh, code their part as early as, part, as possible. So we probably will add an API for describing system capabilities, even if it always says, yeah, whatever, um, soon. Right. I thought that was going to go in by dev tags rather than new API. Yeah, it, it will be dev text based, but the web API does not actually provide packages files. So we, we <coughs> have encoded on the web API in some other way. Exactly. But it's essentially it's the same, it's just <coughs> delivered through a different... Um, you, get, you get a stream, you send dead tags, you can pass this thing. Exactly. Yeah. But we, won't, we don't want to show dead tags to end users. No. No. <laughs> so we need someone to turn, so yeah. No, but it, I was assuming that it was uh, not going to be a separate API. 
It's the same API that we're currently using to send all the apps metadata that is then duplicated in the package. But as Zambio says, you don't have the repository mm -hmm. in your list of sources yes. at first. <laughs> We actually talked about this, just making the repository available and not the devs itself until you unlock it, but um, it never went anywhere, right? The security concerns. Yeah, the client is there and I can do it. It's just not really yeah. We could go in and do it. Oh. How the idea? The idea was that we actually just protect the, the actual pool directory where all the devs are stored, but not the packages files, so um, apt app would still see the application, but if you try to install it, you would get a, you know, permission denied from S3 mm. error un until yeah. you provide a password, which is kind of nice. Wouldn't tell you the open software center? Pardon? Wouldn't tell you the open software center? Well, I mean, obviously, if we implement it, if we would implement it like this, we would have to do a little bit more work to make it really nice. Yeah. We could even have a password prompt in, in app. Mm -hmm. So currently, but PP, private PPAs, for instance, all the protected repositories, those protect everything, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so you can't get those. And exactly. you would be to make that description. Because it doesn't yeah. just protect pool and not protect packages, because <coughs> the information in packages is, is not really, you know... That would be awesome. For commercial. Yeah, yeah just for commercial, exactly. Just, just for commercial. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much the only place we need it, right? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, we talked about this like a long time ago, Michael, right? Yeah. Where was it? Oh, still where was it captured? <laughs> Do you know? Did we probably have it still in the spec, right? Um, probably, yeah. yeah. I think it was just a matter of decision. It's, it's, yeah, it was. Launchpad was very busy at this time, so it just didn't get implemented. Right. Um. That's the level spec. That's more about dip tape, is it? That's about having a store data. Okay. I thought that was a little bit. Sorry. I couldn't get Sorry. Is that a different problem? So there is an actual spec that I've Yeah, I think next one, yeah. There is There is also some some guy from our community who wants to work on it. Um, Jacob. What is it? Oh, so put his tag in. Who is it? J. 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 Um. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and and you know, if he if if you watch this video, I I really apologize. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Yeah. There's no respect to the work I just don't know. Like we talked about it, I don't know where it was captured. Um. But yeah, this this archive index spec. I really hope that this is implemented. It has a different data. Yeah, it's a different one, and it's it would be really good to have it. Okay. But I mean, we we can't do it all obviously in this cycle. So archive index is replacing app and store data. Yeah, and that would be really neat. So in this room, Antivalo. Name the room this time. <laughs> 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 um, uh, we just had a question on IRC. Not sure if it's on top of the list. Oh, oh, sorry. So, just for the record, it's Johan Edwards, and he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like he seriously is. <laughs> All right. Sweet. <laughs> 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 um, feels like the things that. This point on the list has a slim chance of getting implemented in the cycle, but I don't know. This has been requested quite some time ago, <coughs> multiple images per exhibit and multiple screenshots per application. So that's useful. That's something we do need. No, 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 it's <laughs> not something we do need, it's something we have in trunk already. Oh, wow. For, for all the applications in the archive, because Debian, like the screenshots that Debian.net service that we uh, use actually provides it. So... Um, that's multiple screenshots, right? Multiple screenshots. I'm oh, sorry. So isn't that good news? I mean, are they... It is great news, but it means that you will actually have to right. do some work in order to... But it's always... <laughs> so, I mean, you can already go working on that on the client, and you just need to allow my apps to be able to specify... This wonderful thing. gentleman here did it already. Yeah. So <laughs> in trunk. <laughs> in trunk soon. Yeah. It I will show up. 
Great. I mean, I think it, it makes life better for everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Except, Except for you, you, because you have to be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's great to know that you, you are already in block mode. And me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we need to wait for both sets of images to show. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so that's done then. Yes. Um, coupons, discounts. Huh? This, this is, is something we, we were requested even for this UDS, and there was no way we could get it in, mm -hmm. in time. Um, but it's the ability for commercial apps to be able to give discounts or special promotional codes to people at events or uh, wherever. Yeah. And this is definitely one that we can see in online services, which mm -hmm. is Ubuntu One and Software Center. This is something that is shared like, across both of them, and we'll have a way. It won't just be Software Center that needs to implement this. It'll need to be a Software Center and online services way to do this, right. working with pay. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you can we can remove it from Anthony's roadmap and know that there's enough, we have to get a okay. <laughs> a shared way for both services. So the pay team was saying that they don't think it should be done in pay, right? Than yes, they don't have time yes. to do it in pay. They would like you to kind of finish up the transaction with the user before you go to pay. They really like the end. Tell me just. How much Tell me exactly. Figure out how much. Negotiate with the person making the purchase. I don't see how we can provide a very good UI with that separate agent. Central agent would. Whatever yeah. We could have a shopping cart on our side. That did all. <coughs> the work, right? Did everything, including taking the payment details, etc. Exactly. Uh, yes. Yeah. Maybe that's right. at some point you would, it would still end up being it as elegant be. as Google Checkout and PayPal, where you did your shopping cart and you clicked on Pay and then you. Did have some shared, you'd store payment details at uh, on pay. It might be stuck in the way that it'll have a, another step. So you buy in the client, you go to the screen where you're shown the details of the payment, you offer to enter a coupon, say no coupon, sorry, so you go off to what's now the payment form. Or I can do that. Like if in software center, you can click on pay and have some way or buy the coupon. Right, the other way would be to bring these options forward to the client, right. but it w would be cluttering possibly the client even more. I don't know. The biggest I improvement we have in, uh, in pay is the fact soon, I'm going to say soon, I don't know what soon actually means, <laughs> but soon <laughs> we should be able to store your payment details in pay. Right, that's on the pay's roadmap. Yeah. So you don't have to enter your credit card details. Every for, yeah, for soon. For soon. <laughs> okay. Um, that would be great to have. There's the pay what you want, humble bundle payment model. I think that so would be minimal discounts. changes on the client, and we'd need to mm. specify yeah. the price of some special pay what you want, right? Right. Um, but then again, I think the software center agent would need to offer the text entry to say, I want to pay so much, so that we don't handle that work and pay and put to pay. So it'll be the same thing as coupons at that level. It's very similar. I want to pay ten dollars, but I have a coupon, so I don't pay. <laughs> <it either. laughs> um, the trail demo version of an app is a bit of work on both sides. So at the API level, I think it's just the same list of apps you have at the moment, and the flag that says this is a demo of this other app. And then on the client, we'd need to handle it in a way that this app isn't shown to the user directly, but when you go to that other app, you have a button that says install demo or install try version. Yeah. And on my apps, we'd need to allow them to create this secondary app from the primary app. Um, then are we able to sell the license separate in add an You mean no. it's a if the main app has a license key, but the demo clearly, clearly wouldn't, um, I don't see why not. Because yeah, the idea would be try before we buy, so you have a trial version up there, right. play with it a little bit, and then, act, then to actually enable full functionality. Mm -hmm. and, so yeah, I mean, this, there's two different ways, there's a couple different ways to do this. You could list it twice in the store, which is what most stores do right now, right? So doing something other than that is kind of like a... Mm -hmm. We don't have, it still says buy, it doesn't say trial free from a button perspective, so. But it could, if they uploaded a, if they uploaded a free version, it could still say just install. Yeah, they, install. Can, do, they can do that already. Right. Can take, in the title, it could say trial version, and then there could be a version, right? There could be two versions of something in the, in the software center. And the other would be that you were selling 
they were installing a free version of the software, and then we have some facility to sell the license to unlock it later. Right? That's something that I think is possible, but it's, it would right, definitely no. be different. I, I think it, it would still be two packages and two applications. And, and one package was just the license, right? Sure. Well, they both contain the same software. I mean, you could have them yeah. have the same binary inside, <coughs> yeah, and yeah, they yeah. conflict, so one removes the other. But um, oh, one well. is paid and the other isn't. Okay. Yeah. And one comes with the license. A bit annoying. Yeah. But Ah, uh, you remove it and then install the same thing on top of it. Yeah, I'd rather have two. You, you got to download another five hundred megabyte dev file. So <laughs> that's okay. install exactly the same code. Okay. Right. <laughs> um, that's okay. Right. But do, do we do have a way of, of changing the button so that it flags? I mean, if they whatever they set up is a free version. Well, it'd just be a free and application. The button says free. It would just be a free application in that case. It would just say install. It's just uh, a free application. Yeah, but you still have to go to Ubuntu Pay to, or to go to the Ubuntu SSO to sign in. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying every even if an, if an application was free, you still have to sign. So Rhizome, for instance, is free. The button says buy in order to get it, you, it but it says zero dollars. You click on the buy button, you have to sign on to. Yes, I don't really think that's a. That's so a sign on, but you don't have that software I've already filed. And, uh, yeah. Or it might already change. We have that brings already know the price, so we can just show install it. Yeah, we're still done. Yes, this is just a default. So when, when the price is zero, it says install. Well, right, well. right. But you still do you still have to hit the software center agent? Software yes. center agent, yes. Pay. No. Um, so it, way, you're just yeah. changing the button, you're still going to have to sign in to you install the demo. Yeah. The other way around um, demos might be to utilize um, the work that uh, Stefan Grabber did, um, whereby you can uh, click on it and it fires up a... Uh, the uh, test drive stuff, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Right. So it's all the package. It's all so you use the commercial lab? In a so this is essentially um, opening a... Um, no X machine. No X, yeah. Um, so essentially, like like a VNC connection to a remote server, which is not quite right, but close enough, um, so that the application actually runs on a remote server in order to test drive it. So if you want to give it like a 10 minutes go, demo go, go. for someone, um, they would actually... And mo most demos to tend to be either a level or whatever. So right, right. it could just be that the, the developer allows that level, and we just drop the level on no yeah. expression. The trouble is, it will most likely not work for games. So yeah. it will. Yeah, it, it works yeah. good for like real applications, right. but yeah. if you don't have a frame rate, so, so much for games. I want to say, develop, application developers have many facilities to have trials available. I don't think we need to do too much on our side. Yeah. And I kind of put this test drive and these trial demo and make buying the purchase afterwards. That's all part of in-app payments, which is something that just isn't in for the cycle. In-app payments are very important, and letting the developer have an application you can download and then have have residual or after the fact transactions with the user, like opening up levels, like buying a license for it, definitely important, not in, tw not in the next six months. Very important for us though. Okay. Um, next on the list though, I think we're going to be working on this right from the beginning up to a certain degree is metrics and reports. There's several metrics that we want to start gathering that we should be gathering already. So, yeah. Yeah. They're mostly, and mostly they're mostly around software center health mm -hmm. and uh, application developer success right. of their application. Yeah, the my app workflow uh, time. Also. And giving feedback to the developer. And then my account and refunds. You mentioned this yeah. a while ago. I'm guessing, about. Matthew might know. Is there a spec already? I'm almost positive there must be. For a user to go back and look at their account and the, their previous purchases. Does, uh, and request uh, to reinstall previous purchases function. But no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm specifically talking about their the purchases they've made. Yeah. From a credit from the oh, what they've all paid. All purchases, including the ones yes. that installed. Well, yeah, just their, their transaction history with the service. How many, what they've bought recently, when they look at see the credit card statement, they're gonna come to 
so somewhere and be like, why did I want to pay uh, charge me? I so you can go to subscriptions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And saying that the history section should have purchases subsection. Yes. Doesn't, doesn't go to so you can go to subscriptions. But how do I see what? Um, so so from my perspective too, like the most thing is most the person I want to take care of the most is the people who've transacted are reconciling their credit card statement. So I want to see, right. I need Payment to see the dollar amounts. Right. right. So, yeah, and so I can request it. So I can open up a support ticket and say, this is the transaction, so you can help me get a refund. Okay. Or something like that. That's kind of, and it's, I think pay.ubuntu.com should redirect you to the right spot. It's just kind of surfacing that somewhere nicely in the user interface, high out. So can you go back and read for that? Okay. Um, give me. So, right. Two minutes. All right, yeah, yeah, so. We, we've yeah. got five minutes left. Yeah. I just wanted to know if this looked widely out of order to somebody or if we're making somebody's life very miserable or something that's missing or out of order on the list. James? Uh, metric shouldn't be second from bottom. We it should be higher up. Higher up so oh, we know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Social refunds, right? Those are the two. Refunds is even. I don't care about refunds. I care. <laughs> <you pay. laughs> I think that's not <laughs> metric. No, you know, I care, I care most about the users. <laughs> Who have purchased things? Yes, because so, they are right, very um, special. Yeah, we we want some metrics right right away, and we'll be <coughs> focusing on metrics right through the cycle with mm -hmm. all the work we do here about refunds. I let's mean, it, it's put it up to the, let's put both those up. <laughs> okay. So uh, if you log into your pay account, <laughs> yeah, pay will actually list what you bought. And how much. Right, but it, so with the way we have someone enter, enter into pay, I contend to you that it would be very, very difficult for an, someone who had purchased a piece of software to find that. Right, would we, you, you just mean something like uh, a menu item that says view my account. Right. So you go right to the web and there's your my, all your yes, history yes. and you can report problems. Or right, right. It's very important. Yeah. And it's great, that you're right, we already have it, but it just needs to be connected up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, there's no reason why that would not just be a menu button in software center. It, it's, it's more than just a menu button, but yes, it, it, it is a, the thinking about it, make sure it's in the right spots, a menu button is one of the places that it definitely should be. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do it. I'm doing it. Okay. okay. So, that's it on the list. And if anybody <laughs> has any questions. Find us. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Can I ask Thanks, everybody.